Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with some post-fight thoughts on Orlando Salido's win over Juan Manuel Lopez in Puerto Rico this last weekend. Now, uh, it's not every day that I see a fight that is such an eye-opener to me that I try to save the video so I can look back on it to figure out exactly how things should be done by guys who rely on hooks. This fight, in my opinion, and I don't want to overstate it, I think I'm just being accurate here. This fight really is a masterpiece by a fighter who, quite frankly, is a uh, very creative technician he has his own style. His style is unique. He has perfected it. He knows how to implement it in such a way that he, in my opinion, is just too much for most fighters who rely on a lead jab and who just simply aren't prepared to cope with a technician who's literally dealing with angles and a paradigm that's outside the mainstream. I thought it was a masterpiece. You've heard me refer to mid-range hookers in talking about guys like Matthew Macklin, right? Uh, most hookers like to be, and I'm talking about boxing, don't let your imagination get the best of you here. Most guys who throw hooks or women who throw hooks right female boxing has taken off they tend to be right in front of you right uh, they tend to literally be in your face when you look at a Matthew Macklin you can tell that he's been in wars just by looking at his face it's marked right he's gonna take some shots to give some shots you know that his opponent will always know where he is in the ring because he's going to be right in front of his opponent, right? A guy like Matthew Macklin's game is to literally back you up, be in front of you, force you to trade with him. Think Antonio Margarito, same type thing. Margarito, in fact, has had swollen eyes in fights. The last Cotto fight was stopped because of a swollen eye. Margarito gets hit a lot. You remember the Shane Mosley fight? Hit flush several times in the face. Margarito's game is to literally try to walk you down, be in front of you, have you at mid-range, in other words, have you right at arm's length, throw hooks while he's decimating you. Right? You know he's an arm's length away. Right? Giovanni Segura. Another fighter comes in, what I call a mid-range hooker, right? Right in front of you. You know while he is killing your ribcage and wiping you out, throwing hooks, you know that if you can just get a moment to get your shot off, you know exactly where he is. He's right in front of you. He's trading with you. Orlando Salido... It's more complicated. He's not quite a mid-range hooker. This is a different level. He's actually throwing hooks from long range. You don't know where he is in the ring. You can't hit him with your lead jab. Right? If I throw a jab and Margarito's on a roll, I know I'll hit Margarito with it. Right? He's in front of me. Right? Some clever hookers will actually bend at the waist and will try to get low. But again, they're within jab range. They're mid-range. Orlando Salido, while throwing heavy volume, is actually outside your jab. Not only that, he's not in front of you. He's throwing hooks 
at angles. It's really deep stuff. And of course, somehow, and this is the kicker, this is to me his biggest competitive advantage. Somehow, he's able to cut off the ring on you. Right? He cuts off the ring on Wanma. And keep in mind, Wanma is a devastating knockout puncher. Right? Orlando Salido cuts off the ring on you without being within range of your jab. He is a master at distance. This is a guy who knows how to make moves in between your punches. This is a guy who knows how to apply pressure without leaning on you, without taking punches from you, right? He's a guy who literally is outside and he's slowly maneuvering you into the corner and he's far enough away from you where you can't land your jab, but yet in between your jabs, he somehow is able to jump in and land hooks at angles. You know, I look at this fight and it's A plus stuff. He does get knocked down. He does get a bit too confident in one round. He jumps in and Juan Ma, who isn't as advanced a fighter, does catch him with the one weapon he had, a short right hook, right? Understand, you know, Juan Ma's dominant hand is out front. He's inverted. If he can't land, that lead punch, he's finished. Salido did get a bit anxious. You could tell there was a lot of testosterone in the ring. You could tell these guys weren't exactly the best of friends. I can't imagine them inviting each other to Thanksgiving dinner, right? Apart from that moment where Salido gets a little bit anxious, I thought he dominated the fight. And I mean dominated the fight. I thought his mastery of distance was rare, right? He's, he literally had Juan Ma backing up, coping with hooks without smothering him, right? He was literally not there to get hit with Juan Ma's jab, but yet he was there to land more than 200 hooks. He's rarely in front of Juan Ma, He's not Powell Wolak, right? You know how Wolak stands, feet, you know, flat right in front of you in your zone and tries to buy real estate, right? This is a guy who it's just more complicated than that. He owns the real estate, but yet he's not on the real estate, right? Um, few guys have that gift. Sergio Martinez has that gift. Right, Salido has the gift, and I thought it was extraordinary that he hardly throws any jabs, throws less than 100 jabs the entire fight. He lands less than 10 jabs the entire fight. Quite frankly, while I was watching the fight, I didn't even see the 55 jabs that are listed on the punch count. Didn't see it. What I saw was the guy throwing hooks, and like a good pitcher who has the same arm motion, whether he's throwing a fastball or a changeup, Salido seems to have the same arm motion, whether he's throwing a hook or an uppercut. I invite everyone to look at the masterful stoppage of this fight. He lands a beautiful uppercut. And he's far away from Lopez. I mean, as he delivers the damaging punches, he's far away from Lopez, right? Lopez can hit him, but yet he can hit Lopez. And what's beautiful with him is he throws hook combinations, right? He's not just a, you know, load up, throw one punch type. He's not... A David Hay, 
right? An ambush fighter who's outside but who has low volume. This is actually a guy who has high volume. He, he outlanded Juan Ma by a wide margin in the fight. Wide margin, right? This is a high volume guy who somehow, while dishing out the punishment, is operating on such an advanced angle basis that he's not there to get hit with jabs or the other fighter's main punches, right? Juan Ma was actually reduced to trying to play the role of boxer puncher. He was completely ill-equipped. I thought he got dom uh, dominated. I thought the scoring was an absolute travesty. In fact, the scoring in this fight was so bad and the judges somehow either had the fight tied, one judge had it tied, two other judges had Juan Ma ahead. And keep in mind, this is in the 10th round, right? The scoring was so bad that as I saw the fight, by the sixth round, it was so clear that Salito was dominating the fight that I actually wanted Salito to take a round or two off just to pace himself, right? The pace was so frenetic. He was landing so many punches, high volume power shots. He landed so many of them that I was afraid he was going to run out of gas by the ninth round. So I thought, hey, here is where Great fighters, Ray Leonard, Ali, would get on their toes and just stay away for a round, take a round off. You know, just say, okay, I'm going to rest this round just to regroup to make sure I can go the 12. But Salito apparently knew something I didn't because he kept fighting. And in the post-fight interview, I thought it was really telling when he said that he had three more rounds in the tank. He was pacing himself. He also said that he thought he had to outland Gamboa by two to one to get a decision. And all I can say is, this is another episode, just like with the uh, Gabriel Campillo Tavares cloud fight, where we should all say shame on the judges. This was a masterpiece I thought Salito at the time of the stoppage was winning this fight by something like seven rounds. I didn't think the fight was that close and that was in a fight where Salito had been knocked down. Now let's talk about the Yorkies Gamboa fight, right? Salito got beaten by Gamboa. I'm not here to say differently. Again, styles make fights. How do you beat a guy who knows how to work angles, who knows how to cut the ring off without being up on top of you, and who's throwing a very high volume of power shots, and who's very accurate with it, and who can mix in uppercuts, right, that are hard to block when you're busy blocking his hooks, right? I have my hands up to block his hooks, and then he comes right up the middle with an uppercut. Right, And he has leverage on all of his punches. How do I beat a guy like that? Well, I can if I'm Yorkies Gamboa and I have superior foot speed and I can operate outside of his construct. Right? If you're an elite ambush fighter and if you have power in both hands like Gamboa does, and you can literally be outside the angles of Salido. Even as he's trying to cut off the ring, you can avoid the pressure because you move faster than him. And if you can come in on quick ambushes with major power shots, that's how you beat guys with constructs like Salido, who, if you're up close, is going to own the angles. Let me just say... I believe that's how you beat even a Floyd Mayweather, right? If you know up close, you don't have the boxing skills to control the angles and to deal with the defense, right? And Salito was doing some great defensive stuff, great head movement, 
with Salido. Great control of distance. If you know that up close you're completely outclassed, then you have to fight the David Hay type fight, only with a little bit more volume than a David Hay can throw. And that's what Yorkies Gamboa does. Understand Gamboa has lightning quick hands. He throws very short punches. The problem with hookers is that they throw punches on a loop. And of course, a straight line is faster than a loop. If you're fast enough and powerful enough to just hop in with power shots that you can throw straight and then get back out, you can beat a Salido. All I'm saying is that there are very few fighters in the entire sport who have that skill set. Clearly, Juan Ma did not. Let me also say one other thing, too. I'm a gambler. I run a site, gamblersadvisory.com. After the fight, you know, uh, Juan Ma, of course, accused the referee of stopping the fight because the referee supposedly was a gambler. You know what? If the referee <laughs> was really a gambler, Juan Ma, he would have let that round continue because you were getting your butt kicked to such an extent that there would have been no doubt, no doubt, that you lost that fight had the ref let that fight continue just another 45 seconds, right? Gamblers don't want suspect wins, right? We don't want people sniffing around, you know, reaching any conclusion that, you know, this win was tainted. We want definitive wins. And when you're getting your butt kicked as definitively as you were in a fight, quite frankly, that was not close, that you were losing by a minimum of five rounds, why would any gambler, even if the ref were a gambler, and clearly he's not, but if the ref were a gambler, why would any gambler want to get a tainted win when you were already well on your way to getting knocked out in that round? Juan Ma isn't on the level of Orlando Salido. Let's just call it as we see it. I'm not a member of the mainstream press. I'm not trying to get an interview with Juan Ma. I'm not trying to get Juan Ma on my cable station, right? I don't need to have access to Juan Ma. Let's just call it what it is. Juan Ma, overrated fighter at the elite level. Guys, figure out your gimmicks and optical illusions. His is that he's an inverted fighter with his dominant hand up front. Once Salido figured that out, both the original fight and this rematch were over, right? Juan Ma overrated. He should just feel lucky that he never got the opportunity to get his butt kicked by Yorkies Gamboa. And let me just end by saying this with regard to Gamboa. I don't know what's going on with Gamboa's fight with Brandon Rios. Yorkies, please take that fight. I believe you win that fight by KO. I, I just don't see how a guy as slow as Brandon Rios would know what to do with your power and movement. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.